Hi, welcome back. Today, I'm going to show you how I built this spring-loaded push button and how I'm going to use it to build better habits. My motivation for this project will take a little more explanation than normal, but basically, I want to build a new good habit for myself. Specifically, I want to meditate every day. I've tried to make this a habit many times before, but despite my best intentions, and even though I like to meditate, inevitably I start to forget or skip days, weeks, or even longer. But this time, I'm gonna to try to use science to make it stick. Research shows that habits are best formed when you use this formula. You need a cue to trigger the habit. Your cue should remind you to perform the routine. And after the routine, you should get some kind of reward which will then give you an incentive to make the habit stick. So, as I said, daily meditation is the routine I'm shooting for. Now, I like to push buttons and I like to visually see that a task is done, so pushing that button will be the reward. And by putting that button prominently on my kitchen table, which I walk by many, many times throughout the day, that'll be my cue. Seeing the unpressed button will remind me that I still have to meditate today. So that's the long explanation for why I'm making a push button that doesn't really control anything. Now, as I've mentioned before, I don't really have experience with mechanical design, so I'm gonna try to learn from something I already have around the house, a click pen. I know I can take this apart and see how everything works, so I'm hoping I can make a larger 3D printed version that can be used as a push button. After taking apart the pen, I studied the click mechanism to figure out how it works. Each piece has a different series of grooves that force them all to line up. The arrangement and varying depths of the grooves cause the bottom piece to rotate with every click, while the other two pieces stay in place. So after studying how the grooves line up, I loaded Fusion 360 to make a larger version I can 3D print. I started with the top button piece because it had the simplest arrangement of grooves. I created eight identical pillars that stick out of the object. I added a hollow center to act as a guide for the bottom piece. And then I had to shape the top and bottom of the grooves to make them pointed. Finally, I made the zigzag cutout at the bottom where it matches up with the bottom piece. The bottom piece was just as simple. I added similar grooves to the outside of a cylinder cut out the same zigzag shape to match the top piece, and added the center cylinder to guide it into the hollow of the top. I had to make some fine adjustments to make sure the grooves lined up correctly with the zigzag pattern. Once I had the top and bottom pieces, I sent them to my 3D printer. Because the pieces are so small, they printed really quickly. For the final piece of the button, I made an enclosure out of a simple box and added grooves to the inside. The grooves for the enclosure are the most complicated because I need two separate sets of grooves at different depths. The shallower grooves guide the bottom piece that rotates and the thicker grooves keep the top part in place. I also had to make sure I had enough room for the bottom piece to rotate free of the grooves when I clicked the button. I printed out the final test piece and tried to get the button to work. Well, I don't think this solution is going to work, not reliably anyway. Uh, it sometimes will click into position, but usually it won't change position. It'll get stuck outside of position. Um, I'm not sure if I need to print at a finer resolution or maybe the print lines are causing friction. Maybe the design itself won't work with PLA because it's not durable enough. I don't know. I think it's just time to go back to the drawing board. After brainstorming a bit, I came up with this design. The button rotates when you push the one side down, and once it rotates far enough, a spring-loaded catch will lock it into place. This design doesn't rely on any fine details for the mechanism, so I feel pretty confident I can get this to work. The toggle is just a simple extruded sketch in Fusion 360. I used similar sketches for the main housing of the button and some side pieces to hold everything together. For the pivot, I'm going to use a piece from the same metal rod I used when I made the trigger for my Firefly prop gun, so I already know exactly what diameter to use for the holes. I added some registration tabs and holes to the side pieces so everything will fit tightly together. Finally, I made the latch piece which will be spring-loaded. Then I started printing. 
I quickly cut a small piece from the metal rod to use as my pivot. I only needed half of the smallest spring I could find, so I cut it down with my wire cutter. Now that I have all the functional pieces, I can start putting it all together. The spring and latch go into the groove of the housing. Then I attach the toggle and pivot to the side and close it up with the other side piece. Now I can test the button and make sure it works. When pressed, the latch is released and locks the button, and the release lever lets the toggle come back down. Success! However, the toggle can swing too far in the wrong direction, so I made a quick bar to glue to the toggle to stop it from swinging down. After a little super glue, the stop plate fixes that problem. Next, I modeled an attachment to the latch so I can easily pull back the latch and reset the button. I modeled a groove into the bottom so I can super glue it down. Finally, I created the actual button plates that I'll press. These are simply rounded rectangles with a groove in the bottom to join with the toggle. I also added a slight decorative lip at the top. I printed them out in green PLA to make them stand out and super glued them to the toggle. After a few minutes, I put it all back together and then the final button is finished and ready for use. So there you have it. I now have a spring-loaded push button that will hopefully help me set aside 10 minutes to meditate each day. And if it works and I want to add other small habits to my schedule, I can print out more. Maybe even glue them all together and form a super habit-forming control panel. If you want to learn more about the Q Routine Reward Loop and a ton of other great information about building and breaking habits, I highly recommend the book The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. And if you're curious about the scientifically proven benefits of meditation and how it helped a national ABC news anchor, you should read the book 10% Happier by Dan Harris. If you're interested in either book, check the description below for links to both. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. If you want to know when I release new videos, turn on notifications by pressing the bell icon next to my subscriber count. Do you have any tips or feedback? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.